Uh, now, if you're new to the series, you may not know a whole lot about these Formula E cars, but fear not, Mark Priestley is on hand to fill you in on everything you need to know. In Formula E's first season, all teams ran identical cars underneath the bodywork. They all had this big battery tucked away in this big black box, huge amounts of energy stored in there, something like the equivalent of 10,000 AA batteries. Behind that, a McLaren electronic motor tucked inside here and a five-speed Hewland gearbox on the back. Now, that was great, but for season two, the shackles have been taken off and the teams and their associated manufacturers have been given the freedom to design their own electric drivetrain. Now, some teams, like the Andretti team here, chose to stick with the Season 1 technology. They've, they prefer to go with the proven reliability that the system had, give themselves time to fine-tune it, and give them more development time for their Season 3 solutions. But some of the other teams... Well, some of the other teams got quite creative. And if you come with me, I'm going to walk next door into the Virgin garage and have a little look at Sam Bird's car, which is a very, very different take on the challenges that Formula E throws up. Now, this car has done away with that McLaren e-motor. We've now got two electric motors sat inside here. Same battery, of course. All the teams still have to run that for season two. But the control electronics are different. The twin motor setup, there's no five-speed gearbox on the back. In fact, now there's no gearbox on the back. This car doesn't need to run one. Now, these twin motors, the way that they've, they've worked this, car, this solution into the system means that the whole thing is much more efficient. It drives throughout a race more efficient, uses the battery in a more efficient manner. Now, that's great for Formula E. It's what it's all about. But one of the big downsides is that it's heavy. Now, a heavy car around the, the bumpy street circuits that Formula E races on is not a great thing. And Nelson Piquet Jr., last year's champion in the garage next door to us here, has a very similar solution in his car. It's one of the reasons that he struggled this year. Some of the other teams up and down pit lane have taken a very different view on it. We've got cars with one motor, two motors. Some cars have got one gear like this one. There's two gears, three gears, four gears, or even five gears. It's brilliant that we've got so many different takes on these challenges, as I say, that Formula E throw up. I think it's great for Formula E because we've got manufacturers like Renault, like BMW sniffing around the scenes now. We've got McLaren, we've got Audi. Next year, we've got Jaguar coming back into motorsport after a 10-year absence with Formula E. Now, that is brilliant for Formula E, but it's also great for you and I, because if you, over the next few years, are driving an electric vehicle or a hybrid vehicle on the roads, it may well be that some of that technology, some of the learning that went into it, had its origins right here in Formula E.